Hello everyone and welcome once again to Covenant Child. I trust that you are blessed and if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is just a little channel where we just encourage people out of the Word of God. Over the last two years we have come through lots of challenging times and so my purpose really and my aim is just to encourage people out of the Word of God as we continue to face quite challenging times, quite uncertain times and to keep on believing and to trust God and to just boost our faith because we know we need to live by faith and not by sight. And so I want to encourage you today again that God sees value in you, not because of what you've done or anything like that, but largely because of who he is and because he loves you and has created you and has created you as somebody with value. So I want to start reading out of Matthew chapter 13, verse 45 to 46, where Jesus says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. And so some people have used the scripture to explain that Jesus is the pearl. But here we see Jesus saying that the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant who goes out looking for pearls. And so the kingdom is where Jesus is king, where Jesus is obeyed. And so Jesus explains and uses many parables to explain what the kingdom is like. And here he says it's like a merchant that is looking for pearls. And then he comes across this one pearl that is of such great value that he sells everything to buy this pearl. And Jesus here, as he's telling the story, is the merchant. And we as the church that have been bought through the blood of Jesus Christ, his own blood, we are that great pearl. He came to look for the lost. We know he tells the story in lots of other um, parables as well. The parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost son, of the lost coin. How the, 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 the person went out to look. And so he, Jesus, came to look for the lost. We didn't look for him. That's so wonderful that he came to look for us. And then he found us. And he gave his life for us. So just as the merchant paid this costly price for the pearl. So Jesus paid the costly price of his own life to buy us, his people. Now let us just look at the pearl. The pearl, as I said, is us. We have been bought through the blood of Jesus Christ. Pearls are valuable. And many people will pay as well lots of prices for genuine pearls. And so pearls are valuable pieces of jewelry. They are unique as well. Every pearl is different. Because you might know, I'm sure you know how a pearl is formed. That it basically is a piece of sand or some irritant that gets into the oyster in the sea or in the river, wherever it is being, it, it lives. And once that object gets into the animal, it starts to secrete this liquid that surrounds this, because that sand or whichever or piece of shell, whichever, which got into the, the, the animal, starts to irritate it. And so it's painful. And therefore, it starts to secrete this liquid to cover it. And as it secretes and covers it, that is what forms the pearl. And so each pearl then would be unique. Because whatever was the starting point, whether it was a piece of sand or a piece of shell or whatever, it would be different. So every pearl is unique. 
just as you and I are unique. It's made through a process, as I said, of this liquid being secreted to form the pearl. And isn't that what God is doing with all of us? We are going through a process. We are going through a process in which our faith is being tested. We are going through a process in which he is trying to just come nearer to us and where he's longing for us to come nearer to him. And so he takes us through a process, just as the pearl goes through a process. And a pearl is pure. Because that, that, that liquid that is being secreted, that forms the pearl, is from that animal, it's pure. And, it, and a pearl is normally white. Most pearls are white or cream, or, but, but it's a symbol really of purity. It's a symbol of harmony. It's also regarded as a symbol of harmony. It's also a symbol of humility. Pearls are a symbol of humility. And so for us as well as the church of God, as the children of God, we are to be pure. We are to be in harmony with one another and with God. And we are to be humble as well. And there's pain, as I said, involved in this whole process. And so for many of us, maybe what you're going through at the moment is painful. But I want to encourage you. That out of this whole painful process is going to come something quite beautiful. This pearl of great price. In Galatians chapter 3 verse 14, Paul says, He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abram might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. So that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Paul once again coming and saying, how valuable we are. That he redeemed us. He gave his life for us. And as I've spoken before, redemption is buying back. So he paid the price with his own blood to buy us back. He bought us with a price. And so even though we might be going through all these trials, know that you are a valuable pearl of great price. And he's bringing something beautiful. He has given his life completely for you and for me. You are valuable. Who else would give his life for you? Who else would pay the supreme price for you, for me? If you still wonder whether we are valuable, we go to Deuteronomy chapter 14. Verse 2, where uh, the law talks about the children of Israel, which we can apply to us as well. He says there, for you are a people holy to the Lord your God. Out of all the peoples on the face of the earth, the Lord has chosen you to be his treasured possession. He's chosen you out of everyone else. To be his treasured possession. God would not give his life. Jesus would not give his life. For something that wasn't valuable. And precious. But he has chosen you. Because we are. His treasured possession. You might have something. Which you treasure as well. A treasured possession. Maybe an heirloom. That you got from your parents or your grandparents or somebody special, your husband, your wife. That is a treasured possession. And a treasured possession you keep safe. You cherish it. You keep it away from children or whatever people are going to damage it. You protect it. And so that is what you are to God. You is treasured possession and he wants to keep you safe and secure. So just as the pearl is white, we are to be pure unto God. As he just says in that scripture, I've called you to be pure and holy. We must not be contaminated with the things of this world. And pearls, as I've studied it and looked as well, pearls are normally stored separate from other objects. So you would notice, I'm sure, if you have genuine pearls or if you've seen genuine, they normally put them in a very soft little bag 
to store them because they are very delicate, very precious. If you store them, just throw them in a drawer with other stuff, they can get damaged. And so God keeps us as well separate. We need to make sure that we are separate and safe in his hands, under the blood, under his wings, so that we don't get contaminated and damaged by the things of this world. And so as you go into this week, continue to rejoice and to praise God and know that you are valuable to God. We are part of the church. We are this pearl of great price. The treasured possession that Jesus gave his very life for and spilt his blood for. What a wonderful heritage, what a wonderful privilege we have to be these people. Until, God willing, we meet next week again. Shalom.